folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Fog, and this is just a bonus video following up on the games that came with that PlayStation uh, lot that I had bought. The, the, the PlayStation with the foldable screen, so the PS1 and the LCD lid. Um, if you remember, there were like Einhander and a couple others that I already had, and they were really scratched up. And, and the one that was very scratched up is this Marvel, not scratched up, somebody tried to uh, resurface it and they used a hand crank one or one of the cheap ones um, that most people could probably find in a store to do DVDs or CDs they don't necessarily work the same for games any better or any less but they, they just don't give you the uh, intended result of what you want this is kind of what it looked like you can see it's got like ridges almost in it we're gonna try to fix that it's it's an expensive game so I'm gonna take a risk at like trying to fix it, but we'll see. Maybe it'll work, or maybe it won't. The Einhander one, I actually was able to do. And we got basically all of the deep scratches and anything else out of it. It plays fine. There was no problem, so everything was good there. Uh, this is the one that had that manual. If you watched the other video, if you didn't go back, it'll be at the bottom here in the description to check it out. But if you did watch it, you might remember it had like the ripped manual. That actually is something I'm taking care of. Uh, in the pricing so people don't have to pay like the full value of it just some other things here there's a bunch of cabinets go all the way around it's like where I keep the stock for the the store the digital store and the the stuff that I'd use for the the boxes but you can see this is like Nintendo cartridges there's three rows deep and on this side and a bunch of DS and stuff like that bunch of GameCube Dreamcast PS1 and then at the bottom here, I've got like Xbox 360, I've got PS3 in there. Here is PS2 and Xbox, uh, the original Xbox. And over there is like consoles and stuff like that. And then I've got a bunch of sealed games in this cabinet and a bunch of extra stuff in the other one, like empty cases, artwork, I need to put these manuals up there, but bags of manuals of different things. So all of that stuff kind of fits down here out of the family's way. And then I've got a PS3 and my one of my famous PlayStation uh, TVs that I liked. I bought a few of them. I've got another one down here. Um, we ended up not using them for after we moved to the new house and all that stuff. So didn't need them. They sit down here. So... I believe those were the two games. Actually, there were a few more here. There was like a Road Rash and a Tetris Plus, but these ones weren't that bad. Like, the case was bad. Um, you can kind of see it's like really dirty, foggy. And this is the Tetris Plus game. So it's got like lots of marks in it, really some decent scratches. We'll do that one first. If you've never seen somebody resurface something. It takes a little bit of time. It's a little noisy. Um, this is, there's a machine back here. So I have three. I have a JFJ Easy Pro that's just really, I use, I, I, it's basically just to sand the disc down the first step. Then you've got the JFJ Icon uh, one step, which does Blu-rays, but it's really just a polishing one. You can almost stop with this one um, if you've got a good pad and everything on it. Uh, and, and you use kind of like their their liquid. I don't know if none of these are being um, I'm not promoting them. I'm just explaining what they are. They sell liquid. They say you shouldn't use it with anything else or anything else in it That's just the warranty stuff whether or not they can figure it out. I don't know. I don't really care um, I use all sorts of different products on these but this this is theirs and it works with this one. It works well And then this monstrosity. I don't even remember what the company's called uh it, I bought it from some company that actually was going out of business on the East Coast. They shipped it to me, and I can't remember the name of it. It really doesn't matter. They don't make it anymore, so it's not really that important. Oh, actually, it's uh, a Zur disc. They make really more expensive ones. That one probably, when it was brand new, was like a thousand. I don't know. I bought it for a few hundred dollars a long time ago. With a bunch of supplies but this is their stuff you could use that I've used this still on it too it really doesn't matter but this one is really just for polishing like really getting it shiny and it actually has a water tank so it's actually using water to do that 
the reason why I have these because I'm cheap number one and they are cheap to operate for me like it's only a penny or a few pennies in the end because I don't buy like all the special products I just use whatever is out there and no matter what they all do a good job so it really doesn't matter the only thing you gotta do is replace these sometimes which they last quite a long time and these are like little polishing pads but they're cheap anymore because nobody wants to yeah, I guess at some point they'll get expensive, but they don't really make them anymore, so. We'll put the disc in here. We're gonna sand this one down. This is that Tetris one. Before we try the the Marvel one, that's like a $100 game or $70 or $80 game. And really, there's a couple different settings. All you have to do is put it on like setting for five seconds to, to sand that one down. It's probably gonna be fine. Uh, let me make sure I hit the right button. There it goes. So you can hear it. It's grinding the disc. It takes off just, ever so slight you could probably you could probably resurface a game tens of times I don't know how many times I wouldn't want to tell somebody a specific number but I wouldn't be worried if you had to do it 10 plus times I've heard you could do it up to 50 times um, I have had discs that intent that did stop working but I think it was something different um, it wasn't really from the machine it was oxidization or something underneath the disc layer that caused it you can kind of see what it looks like now it's really scuffed up that was the sanding part I don't know I just thought this would be an interesting uh, video if it's not give it a thumbs down if it is give it a thumbs up and share it with somebody it might be interesting for them the problem with these machines they leave a little ring in the center and I'll show you that here in a second this one's gonna take this one has a polishing pad and pretty much I could stop with this. Um, this will take about 45 seconds. You just put a little bit on there, cover that polishing pad, and then close it. They kind of look the same. One's gray, one's white. That's all. And then it says like 45 seconds. So you let it run. These machines, though, I've never figured out how not to do this. I'm sure there's a way. A little sticker or something. But you can see, like, right in the center, there's a little ring, not on the data layer, but like there's a little ring right here. That's from where it's gripped down onto the machine's uh, spindle. I guess that's what it'd be called. And that I can't get rid of. I, get, I You could probably get some kind of sticker, I would imagine, that fits on that. And like it would tear up the sticker and then you might be able to take it off. Any kind of... I would imagine any kind of uh, space that you put in between there, whether it's like a sheet of paper or even less, it may make a difference. I don't know. It might cause a problem. I've never tried it, but you know, who knows? We could test it one time. We're not going to test it on anything new here because from what I believe is I know the way to do this and it'll be fine. So that was the polishing part. And we should have a pretty much ready to go disc. Like I could probably ship this one no problem or play it or anything. But you gotta kind of wipe off the stuff with a a microfiber cloth I guess it'd be called. Get it kind of kind of polished. That's it's not too bad. You see the residue and I mean it's pretty clean though. <clears throat> That's gonna play. But um We'll throw it in the, the third machine <clears throat> and see if we can really make it shiny. And in the meantime, uh, we'll give the Marvel one a shot. So with this, uh, this one uses water, so it's a little wet, a little bit messy. This is like a spray that all that is is just like an optic spray. It just kind of moistens the, the pad in there up. Put about the size of a... It's about the size of a, a dime, maybe, if not a little bit less of that stuff. Right in the center, and then you drop this disc down. And when we do the other one, I'll, I'll actually bring the iPad over and we'll do this. I'm actually, I've never tried to record a video on any of the iPads or anything like that. So, we'll, we'll give it a shot. We're going to let that do its thing. It takes about 30 seconds roughly for that one. In the meantime, let's start on this one. This one is the one that I, I don't know. And 
that is pretty deep right there. That's it looks like tire treads. I think I had said that on the other one too. So we'll load it up. And I'll show you what it looks like. Actually, let's finish this one up. You see there's water kind of dripping off of it. Like I said, it uh a little bit wet. Where did the, uh, the microfiber go? And another one. I always lose stuff. I thought I had three of them. There are two of them. Maybe not. Well, we've got this one. Oh, no, there it is. I tried to use one to clean off like the residue from the one machine and then like dry with a separate one so you don't not contaminate the disc it's not like that but um, you don't put it back on the cleaning or the polishing stuff back onto it so you can see it's got water on it from the from the machine and that's it, honestly the water one I've I've always thought that's the best but I don't use it for all of the process you could. It actually had like six, I think it was six different pads that came with it. Um, essentially almost like a sandpaper one for the, the most coarse. But um, they're really expensive. And they kind of stopped, like I said, they stopped making them. So uh, you really can't get those supplies and the price just keeps going up. So that is the finished product right there. Nice and clean, and we'll throw it in the PS3 here. See if it'll fire up. Well, that does that. Let's see, I'm gonna take the iPad off here. It's probably gonna all fall down. Oop, there we go. So this oops, is what that machine looks like. So there's the pad on the bottom that's gonna grind it down. Then you have this one, which is the polishing pad. You can see it's kind of like messy because it uses like a, a wax or, or like a car wax almost. I don't know what it is really. And then this one, it has like a like a foam pad that it runs it across and there's the little water spout. And that how, and then up here's the water tank, but you can't really see it. And then down here is where the bad water goes and then you gotta dump that out, it's nothing fancy. But I'll put you back over here. Let's see if we can't get that kind of to the same position. I got a box kind of holding it up behind it. Eh, it's not gonna work with me. It's all gone bad now. Let's see if we can move it out a little bit. There we go. So now let's give the machine in the back. We're gonna see if we can grind down the tire treads. And I'm still going to do it for the exact same settings because I don't want to ruin this. And I know that those settings usually work. So, while we wait, we'll watch Tetris. So, let's see how we did on the, the marks first. It took most of them out. I can't even see the tire tread things anymore. You'll see the swirls because of the disc, but I don't see the tire treads anymore. So that's that's a good thing. We've got something there. I'm gonna wipe this one off because it did take a little bit of off of the disc layer off. A little messy. Uh, then we're gonna put in the next machine. We'll see how this goes. Okay, we got that. Now we'll give it a spin for 45 seconds. Here's our Tetris. That one didn't, none of these discs did not work. They just looked like shit, <laughs> really. Um, that one though, it did skip on the audio. So the uh, 
Marvel vs. Capcom, Street, or sorry, Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. That one did skip audio at points in the menu system, which is okay. The game would still play. You could potentially get to a point where it might not load somewhere, or it may never load the music in the actual fight, but who knows. But these ones didn't... It wasn't that this one didn't play, it just looked horrible. So, now it looks really good, plays just fine, so we tested that. We need to get a new case for it, but because the case is broke. But it's done. Makes it look nice. Okay, so this one's done. Man, these things can be tough to get off sometimes too. Jeez. Let's see how it looks without putting it into the big machine. Uh, I think this is the one. Let's kill this get it ready and we'll give this one a shot. We'll actually give it a try without putting it into the third machine. It probably did it. It probably got rid of those marks. I, I mean, the marks, I don't think they were that, that bad. They were from a, a cheaper machine, but hey, if that's all you can afford and it makes the disc work, all the better. I think they're like $29 or $49 for the little spin ones, the hand crank ones. So, while it's not as crystal clear as the other one, not crystal clear, but really shiny, this one took out all the tire treads of the uh, the Marvel one. But let's, uh, out of curiosity, let's just see if it plays the way it is. But we'll still run it through the big one just to really do the kind of final touch. But let's give it a shot here. It should play. I don't see it being a problem. We've got a couple other games here that I think were really bad. Road Rash, I think that was one of them. Yeah, that one's got a lot of scratches. It's got a lot of fingerprints too, but you can kind of see the scratches. If you don't see the lights up there above it reflecting. That one could do it. We're not going to do those for the video. I just, I just thought it'd be cool to look at the worst one. See if we could make it run without skipping. So that's the big thing. We're trying to get it to not skip. It worked before. So there it is. And, uh, you know, obviously before I would send it out, I test them across. There's a PS2 here, there's a PS3 there, and then I have the PS1 uh, with the LCD. I would test it in all three before I would sell it to somebody or send it out in a box. Because I have found that with Xbox, for example, it may work in a Xbox 360. It, let's say it's an Xbox game, an original Xbox game. The original Xbox game may play in a 360, but it may not play on the original Xbox. It's, it's kind of a weird thing. There's a, another kind of crappy disc that came out of that. This was the X-Men Academy one. Well, the game's working, so that's a positive. Let's see if it skips audio. So it skipped it when we were picking characters, if I remember correctly from the video. It was when we were picking characters is when it would skip. And I think I went straight to battle. So we're going to give that a try. In the meantime, I will prep this one over here while that loads up. No. Sounds good. We'll go all the way in and see if it works fine. Um, if I remember from the video, I think I picked Wolverine and uh, it might have been Ryu. I'm just trying to go through the same exact step. There's no skip though, which is cool. So let me get this one ready. You never really want to be too slim on this stuff because you're going to polish it for 30 seconds. You'll want to burn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. There's a chance, I mean, obviously, that it was like maybe only bad on like a certain 
level. But there's no audio skip. Yeah, she is tough. So let's uh, let's run it through the the final step one more time or one time. Again, doesn't look bad. I can see it with my eye. There's this um, where I'm looking at it. There's kind of this like circular pattern around it that you'll see, and that just becomes it's cause it spins the opposite direction when that pad is spinning. Um, it would be reasonable to get a game like this because you'd be like, yeah, that's cool. It looks good, or it may have some feather, you know, scratches in it. This one though really gets rid of that. It does an amazing job, but you gotta lock this thing down. Hit that, set it and forget it, and uh, it should be fine. But I'm happy about this. It'll be nice. Um, somebody will be getting a, a really expensive game. Well, not just really expensive, but more than the, the actual cost of what it was brand new. Um, but they won't be getting gouged on it, because this is the one that, while it has the slip cover or the uh, manual, there's nothing inside of it. It's there's no manual in there. It's it's the real one. It's just there's no manual in it. So um, it will be sold, you know, without manual, but as the back case and everything. So let's see how this worked, and then we'll call it good for the video. I hope you guys found it interesting. Let me know if you've ever. Uh, if you've ever had to, like, get discs resurfaced, I know there's companies that'll do it. Some game stores do it, too. They have very similar, they have newer machines than I do. Um, but yeah, in the comments, let me know if you've ever done that, or if you've found, like, if you're one of the folks that don't, do not approve of resurfacing. There is a collective out there that I've found that do not like resurface. So on anything I post, um... <laughs> it always says like the game is resurfaced because I've had some people get upset, you know, not, not to the point where they were like, I'm going to return the game, but like they wanted it exactly how it was, no matter what. I don't know really what you call that, but they didn't like it. I'm sure there's a term for it. So this one came out with a mirror polish kind of thing. You can see, and again, there's nothing that I can do. And this is how somebody would know, potentially, that um, if I didn't tell them that it was resurfaced, is that little ring right in the center. It's not even on the data layer any longer. It's, it's nowhere near the data layer, but it's just where the disc sits on there and spins around. But you can see that's crystal clear from what it was. So kind of neat. Thought it'd be an interesting video. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I know it's uh, not my forte to record this way but uh i hope everybody enjoyed that and uh definitely stop back to the channel if you haven't subscribe but definitely stop back check out the other videos check out the video that these games came with it was probably the last one that you're watching uh but if you have not yet click that like button give us a share if you like to share this with somebody and definitely come back the next time and we'll see you again here on fat old gamers night